Good morning, foodies. We are back in Malaysia and we are in the city of Melaka right now, a world heritage city. First of all, for the regular viewers of the Gourmet Plate, I have recovered from COVID. I've gotten my sense of smell back, which is why we are filming again. Very sorry for missing quite a number of food vlogs, but we are now back and that is what matters. So, Malacca is a historical city and since the Malacca Sultanate, they have gone through the rule of the Portuguese, followed by the Dutch and subsequently the British before forming part of Malaysia. Hence, the Malacca food culture is deep, diverse and very exciting. We will be in Malacca for 4 days and obviously we are here to explore the foods that Malacca has to offer from noodles, kueh, satay, desserts, street food, anything we can get our hands on within these 4 days. And we are starting with what I personally think is the most important cuisine in Malacca, the Peranakan cuisine. Since today is our first day, we are going to start with something like, let's go and have some laksa. Not just any laksa, but Nyonya laksa. Let the Peranakan food hunt begin. Oh, by the way, that building behind me is called the Stat Hash. I hope I pronounced it right. That is I think the oldest remaining Dutch building in Asia. It used to be the office for the Dutch governor but now it's a museum. There's also a church next to it called the Christ Church of Malacca. So do visit the red buildings. Pretty fun stuff. Alright, back to the food. Alright guys, we're at our first stop which is the Bandahari Marcus. It's actually a shop lot. <laughs> A pretty old shop lot that they refurbished and right at the back they sell some souvenirs, they sell uh, some Malacca related produce and up in the front you can see they even sell palm sugar, gula Malacca. But what we are here for is this pop-up store right over here and it's called Donna and Lily and they sell Nyonya Laksa. If I understood correctly, Donna and Lily used to have their own restaurant selling Nyonya food but due to the pandemic they were forced to close down and now they have this pop-up store in Bandahari Markets which open I think every Friday and Saturday. For those of you who don't know, Nyonya Laksa is a soup noodle dish that comes from the Peranakans who are descendants of the Chinese immigrants who married the Malay here and they are called the Baba Nyonya and it's actually sort of a creamy type of laksa similar to Kuala Lumpur Kare Laksa but different base their base is made out of a mixture of like chicken and prawn broth together with belacan and they use a lot more aromatics compared to the Kuala Lumpur Laksa so they generally have a more fragrant and more piquant smell without further ado let us order the Nyonya Laksa first from the lovely lady over there called Jennifer Just look at this delicious bowl of goodness, this bowl of Nyonya Laksa right here. You can see that the broth is so thick and look at the amount of tofu pork which are like uh, fried tofu puffs. And then they also have this uh, kerang which are black cockles on the side, uh, some cucumbers. This is down kasom, it gives you that very nice piquant uh, flavour with a very nice fragrance. They've got an egg on the side and obviously you got to have that sambal, I'm hoping it's fiery hot. Uh, without further ado, let us quickly try out the broth first and see what it's like. Oh, look at this broth, it's so thick! Mmm! Mm. Yup, this broth has that. You first get the coconut milk flavour, the saltiness, then you get a sort of like shrimpy undertone, which I think comes from the broth. They probably use lachan as well, I'm guessing, which is a fermented dried shrimp. It gives a very fragrant, like shrimpy sweetness in the broth. And then you get the spiciness. The spiciness actually comes after. And this is what is so interesting about this bowl of Nyonya Laksa is that the kick of the spice comes after you have savoured all the flavour of that prawniness, that uh, coconut milk flavour and then you get that kick of the spice and it's very addictive you're like hmm, what just happened and then you just want to go in again mm. Mm. okay <laughs> let us quickly try the noodles now before they get soggy mm. 
noodles are cooked well. Uh, a little bit chewy, I think it's due to the nature of the noodles itself, but definitely not overcooked, it's not soft. But the broth though. Mm, I love the broth. It's so aromatic. In a way, it's sort of like Sarawak Laksa, not exactly the same, but sort of along those lines. Just in Yunnan Laksa, it's a lot creamier and in a way richer as well. Mm. It's actually pretty addictive, this broth. It's the spiciness that hits you. Like, it's, it's like the spiciness is a little bit slow. It's like it comes half a second after you've tasted all the flavors, which is fantastic. And these little green pieces here, they give you that very nice aromatic uh, sort of piquant taste and it helps cut down a little bit on the richness of this pretty creamy uh, Nyonya Laksa. All right now I'm gonna add in the sambal at the side just mix it into the broth and see if it makes it even richer and whether it increases the depth of the flavor of the broth as well. We're gonna give it a good mix. <laughs> Let's try this again. Mm, I think it makes it saltier, but it's still acceptable, it's not like over salted. So I think if you are a person who is more like, um, you have a lighter tasting palette, you might not want to add the belacan in. But generally it does give it a little bit more body. I would recommend putting it in. Mm, let's try the black cockles at the side. I believe they are like raw black cockles and when they pour in the broth, they just let it cook a little bit there. Let's see if it has that nice iron taste of the black cockles. Mm fresh, you will taste the iron flavour of the black cockle and because it has been soaking in the broth, it, the broth gives it a little bit of flavour as well. The saltiness and the spiciness, very nice, very fresh. So the Tao Po, which is like uh, deep fried bean curd puffs and look at them just soaking up all the beautiful creamy broth. I'm excited to have this. Let's go, let it dip it a little bit more. Very fragrant, very fresh tofu bok. And as you bite in, all the broth that's hidden within that's been soaked into the tofu bok, they explode in your mouth. I think the main narrative for this bowl is the freshness of ingredients, which I think is, is essential for every single dish. The fundamentals is that you have to have very fresh ingredients, and this place definitely has that. You can definitely tell from the depth of the broth, the noodles that are cooked nicely, and the, even the tofu puffs, the bird cockles, they're all fresh. For those of you who have not tried Nyonya Laksa before, I think uh, if you like generally creamier based laksas, this might be for you. And they even come with an egg. Mm. Creamy yolk. Yolk has flavor. Definitely good egg. All in all, very harmony bowl of laksa. If this is what Nyonya Laksa is about, yes, very addictive, very nice, very good, I love it. Alright, now that we're done, let's move on to the next spot. That's a cute depiction of the orangutan. Hey guys, after some really hearty Nyonya Laksa, we're at our second spot. Uh, we're gonna have some desserts at this place called East and West Rendezvous. They sell Nyonya dumplings. They also sell a dessert called Chandol, which is some shaved ice with coconut milk and with this green jelly that we call Chandol, and then drizzled with gula melaka. I would say the setup of this eatery is relatively simple. It's a one-shop lot and then they have this huge table in the front where you can see them making the Nyonya tang. And behind they have three tables where the pictures sit and enjoy your Chandol and the dumplings. This eatery is held by Andy Grace and you can still see her making the Nyonya dumplings like right now. In fact, they don't make it every day. So today we were quite lucky we managed to catch them in the process of making it. They started by putting on some glutinous rice, the white glutinous rice as a base. And then they put in the mixture of minced pork together with winter melon sugar, the coriander seeds. Everything is mixed together and cooked. They stuff it in and they top it off with the blue colored glutinous rice which is colored with blue pea flowers. And after that, they bring it up to the back where they boil the Nyonya dumplings in this huge stainless steel pot put it under high fire for an hour before it's ready and then after that they'll hang it up and just let it sort of dangle there to cool off uh, we're going to order one now and then after that we'll try the chandel as well 
Okay guys, the Nyonya Zhang is here. I'm sorry I keep calling it Nyonya Zhang. Uh, it's Nyonya Dumpling. Uh. Over here we call it Nyonya Zhang. Uh. So it's here and you can see that the rice mm -hmm. has turned into a more yellowish hue and taken on a very beautiful blue okay. color on the other side from the blue pea flower. So let's cut in and see what it's like. Ooh, nice, see all the filling within. Beautiful filling. Mm. Oh, and I can smell the fragrance. I think that's the coriander, coriander seed fragrance. Yeah, mm. that is the hallmark flavor and fragrance of mm. Nyonya Zhang. So let's quickly grab a bit and try it out. Yep, this is a pretty good Nyonya Zhang. Mm. You could definitely taste the coriander seeds flavor. It's got a very distinct sort of nearly peppery mm. notes. But of course, I think they added pepper inside as well. Mm. It's quite, there's a bit of peppery flavor. And that's the sweetness. I think it's from the winter melon candy. Yeah, yeah, it's a candy winter melon. They call Tonggua Tong. Actually, a lot of uh, Nyonya Zhang nowadays, they no longer put this in. So I think this is actually quite important because it's, it's very different from... It has a layer to it. Instead of just adding plain sugar in, mm. I quite like it. The rice, even though on the surface it does look dry, mm. it looks dry, I'm not gonna lie, but when you bite it, it's actually okay. Yeah. It's got a nice chewiness. It's not dry at all. It's not like super moist. Mm. It's actually surprisingly better than it looks. And there are also some mushroom pieces inside. Yeah, I think it does add to the overall flavor, the umami. Mm. Of course, the mushroom itself is really like marinated with everything. You can't really taste the mushroom, but it does add to the overall flavor. Mm. It's got a very complex pepperiness with certain layers of depth. You gotta eat it to understand what it really tastes like. The only way I can say is that it really tastes like coriander seeds mainly. Mm -hmm. So if you know what coriander seeds taste like, you will roughly be able to gauge what Nyonya Zhang tastes like. Mm. Yeah, and this is a pretty good rendition of it. Despite the looks, pretty good. Mm. Yeah, I think this is the dish that you definitely must order, especially on a hot day, la, mm. which is every day in Malaysia. So <laughs> this dish is good every day. And I noticed they drizzle the gula melaka first, mm. then only the santan. Uh, a lot of others I see they drizzle, they actually the put santan in the santan first, first, then the gula melaka on top. Yeah. So that is a pretty interesting switch, mm -hmm. uh, which is why you will notice that the, the gula melaka doesn't look like it's really thick, but when they put it on, it's actually very saucy. Mm. Just as the santan sort of diluted it down. And of course, the green chendol jellies will be underneath. We will see them later. Oh, mm, this one is very addictive. Oh, this one is good. This one is actually one of the, the better ones, definitely. The good ones. Mm. Mm. Why I like this particular variant is because it's very balanced. Mm. You don't taste anything first. You actually taste everything together. You get the santan, santan. Uh, the saltiness from the coconut milk. And, and the then you get the gula melaka. Mm. It's not very smoky, but it's got enough caramel flavor. And the smokiness is there, but it's mm. not overpowering. The sago I tasted, it's got a decent chewiness. Um, I think it has for the texture. Let me try a little bit with that chendol and kidney beans. Mm. Mm, the kidney beans is very soft. I think they will cook santan. Mm. Uh, yeah, cool. but it's not too soft. Mm. Uh, there's a little bit of firmness, so I quite like it. And the chendol is very smooth, and you can see that it's actually very naturally colored. There are some chendol that's just like alien green, but this is natural. It's colored with pandan juice. And it's smooth, a little bit of chew. <coughs> yeah, this is a very good chendol. Yeah, the balance is very good between the saltiness and the sweetness. Mm, yeah, mm. the key point is balance. It's just very addictive, very refreshing. Mm -hmm. That's very recommended. Alright, we're gonna head into the plating time segment now. Let's talk about the Nyonya Laksa spot. Mm. Uh, Donna and Lidi. A really good bowl yeah, of the Nyonya side Laksa. Ingredient is very generous. Yeah, very generous portion. ingredients. For the price point, I think I think it's very generous. Right? I think it's about 14 bucks. Mm. Um, the ingredients are definitely fresh. Mm -hmm. And the broth, yes, that. It has a good balance in between creaminess while not being cloy. Yeah. That is very important for laksa. Yeah. And, and the spicy also. Yeah, the yeah. spices. You can definitely taste them. You, you need to take some time, but it's there. You can taste the, mm. the blachan, especially in the broth itself. Mm -hmm. So it was a very enjoyable bowl for Nyonya Laksa. And in fact, I'll go on a limb and say that I will crave for it. Yeah. The problem is it's in Malacca. <laughs> So we have to drive yeah, for two hours. Yeah, we have to drive two hours to come here. Mm. But yeah, absolutely recommended. Mm. Really good bowl of Nyonya Laksa. You gotta come here and try. And with that being said, Donna and Lee's cost a half a on the gourmet plate.
which means it is some high quality Nyonya Laksa right there. Mm. Absolutely recommended. If you are in Malacca, Malacca. you must try. Right. If you love Laksa, just drive down uh, two hours from KL and try. Yup. Okay, moving on, um, Andy Gray's uh, Nyonya Dumplings and mm. her Jendo. Let's talk about Jendo first since it's right in front of us. Everything is just right. Uh. The balance ultimately. Mm. Yeah, between the Santan and the Gula Malacca. Good Jendo, definitely try it out. Mm. Now, on to the Nyonya Tang. I would say for its price point, very, very decent Nyonya mm -hmm. Tang. Way above average. Yeah. The filling within is quite, I would say it's pretty generous and it's pretty well flavoured as well, pretty well uh, spiced. Spice. You could taste all the flavours that is iconic of a Nyonya Tang. So I definitely recommend trying out a Nyonya Tang when you're here and then having a chendol. Yeah, absolutely recommended. But if I were to nitpick a little bit, I would say flavours are very direct. It could do with a little bit more refinement, but, but if you were to refine it further, I think it wouldn't cost how much it costs now. Like it will cost significantly more. Mm. Yeah. And with that being said, uh, it's a West Rendezvous by Auntie Grace Cos and OK on the gourmet plate. Which means it is some good quality Nyonya Zhang and Chendo right there. <laughs> Absolutely recommend that as well if you're in Malacca. Definitely try them out. In fact, I would say try this Chendo first and the Nyonya Zhang. Then you try the rest of the places. Yeah. So I guess uh, that is it for today's episode. Since it's our first day, we're going a little bit light. Tomorrow, we'll carry on with exploring uh, Peranakan cuisine. We are going to go for some Nyonya Kueh mm. at a really famous Nyonya Kueh spot in Malacca. And then after that, we are going to a uh, Pranakan cuisine. cuisine restaurant for dinner, which is recommended by a friend of ours who is a Malacan. So that's it for today. See you guys next week. Stay tuned. Bye-bye. Huh?